In this video, I'm going to try and tackle a project that I previously failed on, which was the repair and restoration of a mid-century style coffee table. If you've not seen that video yet, I will link to it in the description box below. But basically everything was going well with the project up until the point when I added the veneer. I chose to use contact adhesive, which in hindsight probably wasn't a good choice. And when the adhesive had cured, I applied a water-based varnish finish to the tabletop. And when the finish dried, that caused some bubbles to appear in the veneer. That video got a lot of comments and many of the comments were suggesting that the water-based finish that I chose to use was probably where I went wrong because as it's water-based it might have swollen the wood veneer in certain areas creating the bubbles and I think those people are probably right so thanks to everyone who commented. A lot of the other comments I got suggested that using some greaseproof paper and an iron to try and iron out the bubbles might be a cure so I'm going to have a go at that. I'm not entirely convinced that it's going to work and to be honest even if it does work I'm probably going to re-veneer this top anyway because I just think I can do a better job than I did last time. So here is one of the bubbles in the veneer and I'm going to try and work on that one first. Some of the comments also suggested that I should try and pierce the bubble with a pin and hopefully that means if there's any air trapped underneath it can escape. Okay, so that does seem to be working. Certainly the bubble has gotten smaller. I did that until the bubble was as small as I could get it and then moved on to another one. So I've added a couple of holes with a pin and I've set the camera up so that the light is shining on this bubble so hopefully we can see the difference that the ironing makes as a kind of before and after. Again, that's worked really well. I can see on the camera screen that it does still look noticeable, but from where I'm standing above, this is how it looks. Really impressed with that. So like I said earlier, even though the ironing trick seemed to work quite well, I set up the tabletop on a couple of sawhorses in my garden so that I could start sanding it in preparation for adding a new layer of veneer as I figured I could do a better job of it this time. I used my belt sander with an 80 grit belt for this to cut through the layers of varnish and get back to the bare wood of the old layer of veneer. After sanding with the belt sander, this is nice and flat now. I did sand through the veneer in a couple of areas, but that's not a problem. The main thing is it feels nice and flat and PVA glue should adhere well to this, which is the glue that I'm going to be using this time. Another suggestion that I had in the comments was about doing a four-way book match veneer and I really like that idea so I think that's what I'm going to do. I marked up a centre point along the length of the table and I could use the old veneer joint as a reference for the centre along the width of the table. Next I needed to prepare the edges of the veneer and it's worth pointing out here that the veneer I'm using was in poor condition. It was cracked and warped and very old but I wanted to make use of it anyway because it's what I've got and also the grain pattern was really nice. I sandwiched all four pieces of veneer that I wanted to use for the tabletop between a couple of plywood boards with the grain of each sheet of veneer in the same orientation and a couple of millimetres of the veneer protruding. And now I can plane these edges flush and straight with my block plane. This worked really well. When the plane starts to skim along the plywood edges, it makes a different sound, so it's easy to tell when it's time to move along and start planing the veneer further down. Here I'm just checking that the four pieces of veneer met together okay and all looked good and I marked up where I wanted to trim off some of the excess length from the veneer. I did the cutting by making several scoring cuts with a sharp knife until I was all of the way through. I could also trim off some of the width too. 
Now I was ready to start applying the veneer and I'd watched a few videos on YouTube about veneering to get some tips, but to be honest I didn't really find a definitive method that I knew would give me good results, so I wasn't feeling too confident. This was only going to be my second attempt at veneering after all, so I didn't really know what I was doing, but I decided just to go for it and see what happened. First I applied a layer of PVA glue to the tabletop and as I wasn't confident that I knew what I was doing I decided to start with just doing one quarter of the tabletop as a test piece. I sprayed a bit of water onto the veneer to make it a bit more pliable which I hoped would take care of some of the warps in it. Then I positioned the corner of the veneer up to the centre mark and I used some more greaseproof paper and an iron to gently try to get the veneer as flat as possible. To apply pressure while the glue was drying I used an offcut of veneered MDF and some weights on top. And what I should have done here is put some greaseproof paper between the veneer and the MDF but unfortunately I completely forgot. I cleaned up any excess glue at the sides and then left it to dry overnight. The next day I removed the weights and that's when I realised I'd forgotten to add the greaseproof paper and some of the glue had soaked through the veneer and adhered to the MDF. Fortunately though it didn't cause too much damage so after a bit of sanding it was fine. So that seems to have worked really well. The veneer is now nice and solidly glued down apart from in one area and that's along this edge. If I tap with my finger you should be able to hear where the glue hasn't adhered properly. So this is all solid. There's a loose part there and another loose part here. Other than that, it's all good. There are some very slight uh, undulations in the veneer I can feel, but I think once this is sanded and finished that shouldn't be noticeable. I added some marks where the areas of loose veneer were so that I knew where to apply glue. I had this really thin piece of metal which I used to pry open the joint and I used super glue to glue it back down, working it in underneath the veneer with that piece of metal. I applied some tape and weighed it down with a brick and when I came back later and removed the tape, it passed the tapping test and it seemed like it was solidly down, which was great. Then I did some scraping to clean up the area where the next piece of veneer would be added later. So far it had been relatively successful so for the next part I decided to tape together two pieces of veneer so that I could glue them up in one go. I followed the same process before, adding glue, positioning it, adding a bit of water and then ironing it on with some greaseproof paper. This time though I remembered to add a layer of greaseproof paper on top before adding a larger panel and weights until the glue dried. The following day I removed all of the weights and the tape and these two pieces looked great, no loose glue areas this time, all solid. Finally I applied the last piece of veneer in the same way yet again and that one seemed good too. To trim the edges of the veneer I used a flush trim bit on my router. I did later find one more loose area of veneer along the edge. So as I did before I added some super glue with the tabletop held upright so that it would run down into the loose area and I taped it down tightly while it dried. And later I removed the tape and I found that that had worked well too. I cleaned up the edges of the tabletop with a belt sander. In my first video about this table I had added some wax to these parts but I wasn't really happy with the colour so later you'll see that I apply a dye to these pieces to darken them. I then did lots and lots of hand sanding also easing over the edges with 100 grit first and then 240 grit.
Next I added some white spirit to the tabletop to see how it would look with finish applied. I did this just to see if it was ready for finish and it didn't look as good as I'd hoped due to some glue squeeze out on top of the veneer. So after waiting for the white spirit to dry, I did even more sanding. Next I added some walnut dye to the edges to get them darker in colour as I mentioned earlier. I stained the underside of the tabletop too and you can see here that the plywood brace which I added in the first video about this table is barely visible once the stain was added. At this point I was ready to apply finish and another regret that I have from the first video I made working on this table was that I didn't apply an oil based finish to the walnut. The water based finish I used didn't really pop the grain as nicely as an oil based finish so this time around I rubbed on some boiled linseed oil and this added a really nice amber colour tone to the walnut as well as bringing out the grain really nicely. I then needed to wait for the oil to cure before adding the water based varnish so I left it for three days and then I applied the first coat of water based varnish. After denibbing in the usual way using some water and 400 grit wet and dry paper I wiped away any dust and applied the next coat. And then I denibbed again and added a third and final coat. I also finished the underside of the table in the same way. And even though I didn't make this table I figured that by this point I'd spent more time on it than the original manufacturer probably did and it was now a completely different table so I stamped on my maker's mark to the underside. All that was left to do was to add the legs which I had worked on in the original video and that was the table finally complete. This project was a challenge and I'm still not sure if the method I used for applying the veneer was the best way to do it so I welcome any comments from those of you who've had experience working with veneer. It didn't come out perfect but it's certainly much better than my first attempt and I'm pretty happy with how the table looks now. I think it looks really stunning. If you get up close you can definitely see a few imperfections but considering I lack experience and don't have the best setup for veneer glue ups I think it's as good a job as I can do right now. I hope to find a new owner for the table, I've actually listed it on my Etsy store already if you're interested in checking that out. I spent an awful lot of time on this project, I'm not sure exactly how much but I'm definitely not going to make a profit on the table. But it was a good learning experience and because I picked up the table originally for next to nothing it was a good item to work on to try out some new techniques. I hope you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more weekly woodworking videos. If you'd like to show your support for my channel you can do that via Patreon where you can get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free woodworking plans and a credit at the end of my videos. There's a link to that in the description box below. That's all for now, thank you for watching.